man speaketh unto his friend, and he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, son of Nun, a young man, departed, not out of the tower. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, but thou hast not let me know whom thou will send with me. In other words, Lord, who are you going to send with me to deliver these people? Yet thou hast said, I know thy name, and thou hast, come on, Holy Ghost, always found grace in thy sight. Here in this passage, the key factor is when God speaks to Moses and he says, and he said, my presence shall go with thee. And I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Anywhere we go, we want to take Jesus with us. In every aspect and walk of life. But in a setting as such on this blessed day, it is hard for God to anoint and appoint. And it's hard for us to have a glorious time without the presence of Almighty God. And in the course of our lives, without question, you can tell when the Spirit of the Lord is in a place of worship. But it's the attitude of his people that makes it so important that we should desire or request every now and then that the Lord would allow his presence to be known within us. Do I have a witness? So I want to use for a subject just for a few moments. Lord, stop by here. Maybe you didn't hear that. Lord, stop by here. In order for us to come out of the conditional mode, the traditional mode, as well as the uppity mode, we need the Lord to stop by just a little while. Because I declare when he stops by, there is a blessing uh, in store for us. How many are looking for a blessing this morning? Let me, let me just ponder a little bit here. In order to have and enjoy the presence of Almighty God, the Son and the Holy Spirit, first of all, we should consider it an honor just to be in the presence of the Lord. Am I right about it? Many of us take it for granted that the Lord is just going to come by whenever he's ready. But the Bible says we ought to invite him in and let his presence be known through ushering one by one. I didn't come to show and tell this morning. I come to get a blessing from Almighty God. And in order for me to get that blessing, I've got to want his presence to be known not only within me, but I've got to be able to let somebody else know that I love the Lord because he heard my cry one day. <laughs> and not only did he hear my cry, I want his presence to be known throughout the land because I don't mind being used as a vessel for Almighty God. Is there anybody here who don't mind being used every now and then? There's got to be somebody here that knows that when he is in the house, when his presence is known in our lives, that no matter what comes your way, God knows how to show up and show out. And whenever he shows up and shows out, his presence makes us feel like the joy that we ought to have on the inside. Are you praying with me? I found out to know such a fellowship with God 
even as Adam and Eve enjoyed there in the garden before that great sin. His presence is beautiful. It's touching. And the ultimate concept of what we receive when his presence is known can be none other than a blessing. Out of all the cares and tears in this world, out of all your trials and tribulations, your ups as well as your downs, when God steps in the presence, somebody ought to know that I feel better. And I feel better because the Lord made it possible. And he made it possible all because he loves you and I. Is there anybody here that know that his presence need to be made known? Oh. Uh, I found out that his presence makes a difference. And that difference can be sometimes between life and death. Somebody knows that God, when he steps into any portion of our being in our lives, that folk don't feel like they used to feel. They don't even act like they used to act. There's something about his presence that, that makes the powerful name of Jesus dwell amongst men and women. And what I mean by that is, I don't know how you feel this morning, but, but God is smiling on me right now. I can say that because he woke me up this morning, clothed in my right mind. I've got one more day to tell somebody that God is real. I've got one more day to, to shout my troubles over. I've got one more day to let somebody know that Jesus is alive and well. How do I know that? Because his presence is all around me. And when his presence is around, it doesn't matter what you think, say, or do. God's got it all in control. When our time comes and the presence of God is near, our whole objective is to have the ability to overpower Satan. Come on, somebody. Because unless God's presence is around us, we become in a defeated mode. We lose battles quickly. We get discouraged easily. And we fall short of what God wants us to do. And somehow we struggle and struggle and struggle. It doesn't have to be on Sunday morning when you ask the Lord to stop by a little while. It doesn't have to be late on Saturday night. Every now and then when you steal away to your secret closet, you ought to look up and say, Lord, stop by here a little while. What, 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 why do I need him to stop by here a little? Because he is a heavy load bearer. You can lay any of your burdens right there at the foot of the cross, and God will make everything all right. Is there anybody here who know what I'm talking about? Has God done anything for you? Has he blessed your life? Has he helped you to bear your burden? Every now and then you ought to look up and say, Lord, stop by here a little while. The ability to defeat Satan should be a Christian's ultimate goal. That power that we get with his presence is needed to stand against temptation. Somebody say temptation. And you may not admit it, it's all around you. Maybe not in the form that another neighbor may have, but temptation is all through this house. Because Satan is looking and jerking and lurking, seeking whom he may devour. And every now and then when you think about something, what somebody have done to you, that temptation takes you off of the mind of Christ. Every now and then when, 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 when trouble comes on your horizon, when bitterness gets in your heart, when folk don't understand you, you ought to look up and say, Lord, stop by here. <laughs> stop by here. A little while and we're not just talking about first baptist we're talking about the soul the spirit that lies within you 
reach up and wave your hand and say, if you know that you know that you know that God's presence is in the place, look up and say, stop by here. Stop by here a little while. It takes determination to hold on to God's unchanging hand. I found out when his presence is near, grace abounds, meaning you understand that the Lord loves you and he hears your cry. I found out in God's presence where one discovers that solutions to problems can be solved. Y'all don't hear me. When God's presence is in the place, problems get solved. I don't care whether it's a marriage problem, a school problem, a personal problem, any kind of problem, when God's presence is available and in and around your spirit, things happen. Have I got a witness? I found out that God gives you wisdom in spite of all the decisions that you have to make. And I don't know, somebody had to make a strong decision this week. And that decision could not have been done successfully without the power and the presence of Almighty God. Sometime direction along life's journey, when you don't know which way to go, His presence makes the difference. God will straighten it up. He will allow you to walk in that straight and narrow path, in the newness of life, into situations you didn't think you could get out of. But God has the power. His presence will allow you to go where he wants you to go. Do what he wants you to do. And most of all, be what he wants you to be. You don't have to impress nobody. Y'all don't want to hear this. When it comes to serving the Lord. Because see, his presence will make everything all right. The problem in this day and time, we are too busy pleasing folk. Y'all don't want me to go this way. Instead of pleasing God. But I declare if you to please, please God, those folk that you thought were your enemies will become your friends. Those folk that were working against you, those folk that are working all in a totally different direction will become footstools of mercy. Not your footstool, but footstools of mercy because God knows how to make your enemies leave you alone. Y'all, y'all don't, y'all I, I dare not say that all of us have an enemy in here. And he may not be visible to you, but there's somebody that don't like even how you look, not alone how you walk and talk. But I tell you, you don't have nothing to worry about when God is on your side. I heard somebody say, when God is on your side, his presence within you powers above anything else you could ever do or say because Jesus knows how to straighten it out. Stop by here, Father. And when the Lord hears your cry, his presence also discovers Forgiveness. I said his presence discovers forgiveness. That's a hard thing for a believer. We don't want to forgive nobody. But yet we want God to forgive us. A believer ought to know that once you learn how to forgive, then for whatever burden that you're holding back that you feel that God won't understand, just may be the circumstances that he's waiting on you to look, forgive somebody else, and then maybe I can forgive you. You don't like this. You, you, you don't. You, matter of fact, you're saying, Pastor, close it out right now. Because see, the thing about forgiveness is we've got it turned around. Forgiving somebody is God's way of doing things. Just read the Beatitudes. See, your way and my way of doing things is not the right way. If you're satisfied when somebody says, I'm sorry, that's an iffy right there. 
because it depends on what mood you're in that day. Well, my brother and my sister, <laughs> let, let me tell you how God works it. You ask him to forgive you of your sins and any wrongdoing that you may have done to somebody else. And then you wonder why deep down in your heart, see, he knows your heart and your spirit. It came off of your lip, but it didn't come from your heart. And when it doesn't come from your heart, God holds that in stalemate. In other words, he holds it right there because he knows you're coming right back to ask him to forgive you for something. 